Australia. Bachelor's degree in Electrical Engineering from Rajshri University of Engineering and Technology with the University Gold Medal. MBA degree from Australian Institute of Business. As special guest, I welcome Dr. Celia Shahnas, ma'am, Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Chair IEEE BD Section, IEEE Women in Power, Region 10 Representative. Ma'am will join us very soon. Enthusiast participants from 31 different institutes have registered for this webinar. I welcome all the participants. I also welcome all the branch members to this session. And all the participants are requested to follow some instructions during the webinar. Please keep your microphone muted unless you are asking for any query. Feel free to ask your questions. You can write it in the chat box. Our speaker will answer your questions during the question and answer session. A link of feedback form will be provided during the workshop. Fill up the form to get the certificate. Finally, I'd like to request Dr. Apel Mahmood sir to start his discussion. Sir, please. It, uh, thank you, Fatima. Yeah, it's always a great pleasure to talk uh, when it invites me, yeah, because that's my origin. And uh, yeah, whatever, yeah, it's really a busy time for me because uh, teaching started here in Australia, so it's a bit busy time. But it's still, I cannot say no when when you guys particularly invite here yeah, when something is related to it. I cannot say no. Yeah. And it was a bit difficult for me, particularly to prepare the presentation slide because of the nature of the title, actually. Yeah, it was uh, related to the roadmap on renewable energy research, technology and development. And uh, the reason was uh, basically I do core technical work in that area. Uh, basically, I do control and optimization in the in, uh, in, in renewable energy application, including power system application. And I delivered a couple of talks that re related to the control, but uh, this time, and that was too technical. And I, I, I thought that like uh, too technical might be tough for particularly the new students who are particularly in uh, second year and third year. That's why I tried moving away from there. And I tried preparing the slides uh, to cover the technology and challenges that we are facing, particularly in the renewable energy space. And uh, I'll try to cover that. So first few slides might not be just too much technical details, just I'll try to give you the overview and then uh, I'll be talking more about the technological advancement. And uh, I, I saw there are, there are a few audiences who might be experienced in the area, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry for them. Like I'm going to cover very fundamental things here. Uh, you might not get very details or technical, but it will give you an overview of what is happening in the area. So thanks, Fatima, for nicely introducing me. And uh, I'd like to start with the main agenda here. Like if you look up, uh, I put to uh, yeah, I put, uh, I'll give you some background, then I'll talk about the current and few, current status and future goals for renewable energy and major renewable energy sources. And I'll try to cover the major challenges along with some potential solutions, what could be done or what, what, is it, what has been happening and what uh, I have been doing in that, in that area particularly. So I'll start with very, very, very beginning uh, with, the, with the conventional power system. If you look, this is a conventional power system it's starting, uh, yeah, it's starting uh, from generation to the load center. Uh, mostly conventional power system, they have got uh, like a con uh, fossil fuel based generator. And uh, the, we are moving away. If you look at the research and development over the last, uh, I, I've said since 2010, and if you consider from 1960 or something like that, you will see the changes that happened over the last 10 years that didn't happen over previous 
that didn't happen over previous 50 years, okay, from 1960 to 2010. So that means uh, from 2010 to 20, whatever changes happen, there is a massive change in, uh, in, in power system. And if you look at the conventional power, power system, the generators are primarily located far away from the load center. Let's say, for example, how many of you, like uh, particularly in rural area or wherever you, you, are, you are staying, like how many of you see those generators that is generating power for, for your house? We, do, we don't see many of these generators, okay? That is the conventional trend. But in future, what is going to happen? A lot of this uh, in modern power system, a lot of these generators are coming close to the load center. Okay, a lot of these generators are coming. And uh, in this modern power system, we will still have conventional generators, like we use uh, digital generators as backup, or we might have some conventional generators, but uh, modern power systems are mostly dominated by renewable and energy storage. So when we talk about modern power system, that will have solar, wind, and I'll talk about other, 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 other renewable energy sources, and I'll show you the popularity and all this. Okay, so, there is there is the there is the trend okay there is the trend that is uh, happening currently and uh, more to come particularly you will see a lot of electric vehicles and uh, in Bangladesh there are millions of electric vehicles you will see tri-wheelers all these tri-wheelers they, they they run with battery energy storage so we need to charge this these are some versions of electric vehicle electric vehicle doesn't mean that you need to have Tesla or some sort of uh, like uh, branded vehicles okay all these tri wheelers are also electric vehicles these these are coming also well, these are coming also electric truck heavy electric vehicles are also coming and you will see like other renewable energy sources let's say for example uh, geothermal and a lot of people in bangladesh they are talking about biogas and all this uh, but uh, i'll show you the popularity later in a slide okay i'll show you the popularity of different renewable energy sources though biogas is not very much popular around the world and uh, energy storage, not only the battery energy storage system, like uh, recently we have been talking a lot about the hydrogen. Hydrogen is coming. I'll talk slightly talk about hydrogen, what is it is, and how, how it is going to, how it is going to work. I'll talk about that. And also we are talking about the, we are talking a lot about the smart grid. Okay, we are talking a lot about the smart grid, which will need to have measurement and communication. Okay. So all these things, particularly sensors and uh, will, will come, sensors and communication will come, and it is coming actually. So this is a microgrid or some people just will call it smart grid. It's a smaller version of the larger grid. That's what I simply say. You will see that uh, the, the renewables, mostly solar, you will see, you will see plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, then you will see the other, other distributed generators. These are standby generators. You will see energy storage, uh, other energy storage. Okay, and uh, also you will see large scale utility, utility scale big energy storage. And uh, this, this microgrid can be operated autonomously or connected with the grid. See, this one is connected with the grid. When it operates autonomously, we call it islanded mode. And when it is operating with the with the, with the connection with the grid, we call it a grid connected mode. Okay, and this is what it is going to happen. And this is yeah, this is uh, yeah. We don't see much in Bangladesh, but uh, it started happening in a lot of different areas. It started happening, and particularly at Deakin University, we have got our own microgrid, which uh, will be commissioned uh, next week, sixteenth of April, actually. Yeah, so we have got our own microgrid. So <clears throat> what are the features of this, of this modern grid? Okay, what, what is the feature? I, I have already touched, but I want to summarize here. All this microgrid will be dominated by renewable energy sources. You saw some figures that I showed you, you already saw. New types of loads are coming or increasing. For example, electric vehicle, we haven't thought of this tri-wheel that we saw now. Like a few years back, we have thought of that. So all these uh, new loads are coming and uh, also generators are located close to load centers and more measurement and communication devices are coming. Okay, And uh, we call this uh, like uh, in power power in power system, we call these uh, sensors as filter measurement units. Okay? What it does, it measures voltage current and uh, rotor angle or bus angle at, 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 at the point that we connect. 
Oh, other point. What is the current status of renewable? Let, let me tell you the current status. That's from one of the recent report of renewable to, to 2020 global status report. If you look, still the renewable energy is uh, around less than one third. Okay. If you look, non renewable energy is 72.7%. Well, 17.3 is renewable, but out of this, uh, sorry, 27.3, out of the 27.3, 15.9, more than half from hydropower. But if you look at solar and wind, okay, it's only, only like uh, one third of, uh, one third of renewable, okay, including solar and wind. Wind is still dominating, yeah. So bio, you will get only around 2.2 and geothermal, other concentrated solar, yeah, solar photovoltaic or wash on a tidal, only 0.4%. Okay, that's the, that is the energy production by considering the up to the end of 2019. Yeah, this figure might change by now, but it's still it is, it is less than one third, okay? So that means uh, like if a lot of the countries around the world, they are talking about the sustainable, uh, Sustainable Development Goal SDG and a lot of things are yeah a lot of countries that got their own agenda to reduce the carbon emission and they are, they, they want to decarbonize decarbonize the electricity system that means if you want to decarbonize that means uh, you need to have more renewable into that that means uh, in future the network will be dominated by renewable energy but there are some challenges and uh, what are the challenges I'm going to talk yes yeah, soon. And how can we, 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 we cover some of this problem? So out of that, like, uh, yeah, I, I will try to show you the energy use by sector. If you look, building consumes around 86 point, uh, around 33%, but uh, out of that, like uh, 33, 86.4% from non-renewable, 13.6% th uh, from renewable. But out of this 33%, 70% are used basically for heating and cooling, okay? And then if you look, only 13.6 only out of this uh, like 33% are used from the renewable. What I'm trying to show you, how much you consume from renewable, how much we generate. I just want to show you a current share so that you understand how much we need to do? A lot of people, this is the thing that like we have done a lot on renewable, but no, what I want to tell you, no, we haven't done much. And you get an idea from a uh, uh, from, uh, from few slides that I'm going to show you. Industry, like industry and agriculture, that consume around 35% of the total demand. Okay, again, around for 15%, 14.5% from renewable. Okay, previously we saw 13.6, now we see around 14.5%, okay? We are getting from renewable. And uh, now remaining 32% we use in the transport sector. And out of that, we use only 3.3% from renewable, okay? But uh, there is a huge drive in the transportation sector for for using uh, using renewable energy. When we talk non-renewable, it includes all this petroleum and everything, okay? It doesn't mean that like uh, they consume electricity only. When we talk about energy, energy includes the fuel and everything, okay? So that means, uh, yes, still there are a lot of opportunities to work on renewable, but uh, I want to show you in this slide the recent trend, recent growth up to 2000, uh, uh, yeah, up to 2019. From if you look from 2009 to 2000, uh, uh, 2019, you will see that the net additional, yeah, the net addition to of renewable is around 75 percent. When you compare with with fossil fuel, fossil fuel only 25 percent new fossil fuel as generator or non renewable generator. But we have got like uh, 75 percent. That is what I was telling you. The change that we saw in power network for the last 10 years that didn't happen in the previous 50 years, actually. Okay, so there is a huge drive for the renewable. Okay, there is a huge drive for the renewable, and this is in the yeah. This, sorry, this, there is a typo. It's overall. It's not for uh, yeah, transport. It's overall. Okay, so that means. We need to still do a lot of work in the renewable space if we want to de decarbonize the 
And if we would like to decarbonize our electricity system, okay, we, we, need, to, we need to have more renewable. Like, uh, as I told you, like it's really hard for me because I do mostly technical work. It's really hard for me to show the statistics, but uh, I, from now on, I'll talk more on technical, a little bit of technical. Yeah, there is the status of the renewable er energy around the world. And you, you saw the major sources, hydropower generation system. Okay, then we got wind, we got solar, and we got also biogas and uh, tidal and others. Okay, these are the major, and I'm going to cover the first three. I'm going to slightly cover the first three along with the technological advancement in that in that area. Okay, that is what I'm going to talk. I'm not going to cover that the biogas tidal or other because I don't have expertise in that area. So let's let me show you the popularity. Like uh, uh, there was a survey that was done in uh, in uh, in uh, by by then twenty IENA, okay, International Renewable Energy Network Agency. Uh, the World Network Agency, they, they did a survey and from that survey, you can see more details in the link. So whatever sources of those uh, figures I have already put in the, in, the, in the slides, and also I have already shared the slides with Onukom, hopefully he'll, sh he'll share with you because I don't have anything like confidential that cannot be shared, and I have already shared with, uh, with Onukom. Hopefully he will share the slides with him if you want to get more information you can go and uh, click on those links or on those uh, on the sources. I have over, I have appropriately referenced all the sources. You can go and have a look. So if you look at the popularity of uh, different types of energy sources, like solar is the most popular, wind, then, then coal is still popular, you, can, you see. Okay. Then uh, like uh, gas, like uh, steam and all this, hydro, nuclear, bio, and you see the solar and wind, what I want to convey, solar and wind is still on the top, okay? And if you take off the coal and gas, like you will see hydro. That means these are the key major source uh, that is driving the renewable energy, energy, energy. Yeah. So let me show you the hydropower. Basically, if you look, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to work on the principle, talk about the principle and all this, uh, I believe that you all are competent to go and study how it works, how it generates power. Basically in hydro power generation system, we use, uh, if you look at the uh, red parabola inside the red parabola, I just try to point it out the synchronous generator, we use synchronous generator. That's what we use for other, other fossil fuel based generation system. Let's say if we use a, uh, use a steam turbine, we use coal, for, we, 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 we fire coal to generate the steam, okay. Then we, 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 we got a steam turbine that, yeah, this is a water turbine, usually for steam generator, we use a uh, steam turbine, okay. Then we use synchronous generator. That means the operational principle of this uh, synchronous generator is quite similar to that of the traditional uh, Generators, uh, uh, generators in traditional power generation system. Okay, the only mechanism, is, the only difference here is we use the steam turbine. Oh, uh, sorry, we use the water turbine instead of the steam turbine. Okay, because it rotates using water. That's why we call it water turbine. Okay, so it 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 the the only distinction is that in summary, the the source that you are using to rotate the turbine. Okay, so this is the hydro, that means this is a simple generator. And what are the challenges? Okay, in, in hydropower or conventional, as I mentioned, the challenges are similar to conventional power network. When you have synchronous generator, you will have uh, angle or frequency stability. Angle and frequency, they are related. That's why I'm saying angle or frequency stability problems. And you will see voltage stability problems. So this voltage stability problems you will see with the other generators as well. I'll talk about that. So these are the problems that we see because uh, let's say uh, what do you we, we mean by those stability? Let's say a generator can carry like a, a certain amount of load. When uh, you are you are overloading or underloading the generator, so what will happen? There will be acceleration or deceleration. Okay. That means there will be mismatch between the generation and load. So what will happen? There will be oscillations. Okay, that oscillatory behaviors that persist if they persist for a 
long period. So what will happen? That will destabilize the system. Okay, that will destabilize the system. So I will show you a consequence of SARS, SARS event. Let's say this is a practical, and this is one of the uh, one of the oldest blackout in the world's history. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, this is this this happened in Europe basically. This happened in Italy. Okay, so what happened? The outage of two. There was an outage of two. Yeah, if you look at the at this two red triangle again. So two inner Swiss uh, 400 kV line was stripped. Okay, yeah. The the second one is uh, was stripped after the after 20 minutes of the first one. Okay. So what happened when one, one of the buses, one of the key bus or a strong, a strong bus from the network trips, so what will happen, the surrounding bus started happening, okay? The surrounding bus started happening. The European network is connected, okay, interconnected across the Euro. So what happened, the Swiss interconnection, Switzerland is uh, just neighbor to, to Italy, okay? So what happened, that affected, in, uh, that affected in Italy, actually. What happened? In Italy, they saw on 28th of uh, September in 2003, they saw blackout in Italy, okay? Because they overloaded two 400 kV lines from, from between, that, that cover, the, uh, cover between France to Italy, okay? And both are trip. So 50 million people were out of the electricity, okay? They were out of the electricity, but it was on Sunday, okay? So the consequences of SARS instability is blackout. You will see blackout and also sometimes we saw, uh, like a, back, a few years back, we saw similar blackout in Bangladesh. Right? And also we saw in South Australia in 2016, we saw another blackout, okay? So what, what causes, what, what happens? When, when these changes happen in the system, let's say, when these changes, uh, these changes happen in the system, what happens internally behind the scene? What happens actually? Okay, let's say this, these are the, when, when you talk about the changes in a system, that is basically transient. Changes mean transient. When it is settled down, we call it steady state. When they are transient, okay, when they are transient, so let's say you can carry a certain amount of load, but if you are overloaded, so what will happen? You will, uh, you will just, uh, yeah, you will just, uh, you'll be out of phase, okay, you'll be out of step, actually. The same thing happened in the system. When the generators are overloaded or underloaded, so what happened now? When these were treated here, these were underloaded, but other parts got overloaded. So what happened? The generator treats, that means the transient, the transient within the system affected. And the generator, the simple generator, let's say I have used the two machine, a two area formation system here. There is a, uh, there is from a book called Prabhakandu book. Prabhakandu power system stability and control by Prabhakandu. We call it Bible for the power system stability. So what happened, the generator has got some parameters. We call it uh, stability sensitive parameters. That is the dynamic parameter. When you talk about the change and transient, that is dynamic, that represents the dynamic. So what happened, these parameters, let's say this is the, open circuit dielectric system, transient open circuit time constant, transient reactance, all this transient parameter that changes depending on the transient in the system. So what happened, that changes, when these changes happen, the generator goes out of step actually, the generator trip off. If, if, if you can see, we, we did some simulation, we published this work in uh, item transition and control system technology in uh, 2016, one of my students, yeah. We did this work with one of my kids. If you look the straight line, yeah, I'm colorblind, so I don't ask me which color I'm talking, probably it's black. If you look at the straight line, black straight line, you will see that there is when there is no changes in parameters in the system. That means the system in steady state, that means the system parameters are not disturbed. But when there are some changes in D and H, that means the damping constant inertia, so you will see some changes, but that is still okay. If it persists for a long, small time, that is still okay. But when you change the transient parameter, let's say TD, XD prime and all this, you will see severe changes, okay? That means when these oscillations, this is the speed deviation of generator one here. 
Okay, we are looking the speed deviation. That that in simple generator the speed deviation should be zero because the simple generator only is operated at the simple speed. That means the speed deviation will be zero. But uh, when these parameters get disturbed, you will not get zero speed deviation. That means your system will be disturbed. That means that is a key challenge. Okay, that means you need to put more damping. When you talk, when the, when uh, when let's say you are shaking. Okay, when you are shaking for overloaded or for some sickness, so if we want to stop you, we need to hold you. Okay, we need to hold you from two sides. Okay, so that you don't shake. The same thing we need to do. So in in these uh, hydro generators or simple generators, okay, in simple generator we use the excitation controller. Okay, we use the excitation controller to solve that. And the excitation control input I have put it here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. EF is the excitation control input, and we consider we design controller by considering all the parameters appearing in the model. This is the model. Yeah, I'm not going to talk in detail. We consider all these parameters as unknown. We have considered external disturbances d1, d2, d3. All these are external disturbances, and we represented all these parameters theta as unknown. Okay, and then what we did? We used the measurement of the speed to estimate all those parameters. That is what I'm going to show you. We measure the output, which is the speed deviation. Then we use the we estimate the parameters, and we use the estimated parameters to design the controller. That means if there are some changes in the system, okay, that changes will be captured through the measurement, and based on that measurement, we will be starting estimating the parameters. Then we will be sending the parameters to the controller so that the control signal will adapt the situation. Okay, that will adapt the situation. And add more more damping torque into the system so that the system gets stabilized. Okay, this is how we try to solve. And uh, this is one of the, yeah, the we we applied disturbances at 12 seconds and we cleared that disturbance at the uh, 13.2 second basically. And we we compared the performance of the controller with what we have been uh, proposing here, robust. Adaptive nonlinear or, or robust adaptive uh, nonlinear adaptive backstepping controller. So this is the green line. That is what we did. Okay. So we we, tr we try to show that like with uh, with the controller that we do like uh, that stabilizes the system. That means you need to design new control that will have more damping. That will that will eliminate the sensitivity issue within the system. So. Let's go for the wind power generation system. Like in wind power generation, we have got two types of wind power generation. One is fixed speed, and another one is variable speed. Okay, in fixed speed, we use the squirrel case type induction generators. For variable speed, we use uh, WFID induction generators and permanent and magnet signal generators. And I'll talk both. Okay, fixed speed has got some limitation. Okay, the speed need to be fixed. There are a lot of limitations. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, if you go and Source in Google, you've got hundreds of limitations. I'm just going to talk about the key technical problems, okay? Key technical challenges. I'm not going to talk all the major challenges, like all these benefits, okay? That is already available if you start from, from the basic Google search, okay? So if you look here, this is a squirrel case generator. Again, it's a gearbox. You need to speed up or speed down. We use this gearbox to control the speed, basically. Nothing more than that but to, uh, to ensure that the wind generator has, has got a cut of uh, yeah, speed which is above the cut of the speed. Then, uh, if you look, it is connected to the grid. But uh, if you look, we have got some statcom and uh, capacitor bank. Statcom is static uh, simplex compensator, and capacitor banks uh, all these uh, compensators they provide reactive power. Okay, that means if you want to start a simple generator. You need to you need to supply reactive power. Otherwise, sorry, induction generator. You need to supply reactive power. Otherwise, you cannot you cannot start. That means you need additional source of reactive power. When a system consumes reactive power, there are voltage stability problem. Okay, there are voltage stability problem because uh, you know like uh, the voltage will go down if it, if it consumes. So, when we talk like frequency stability is related to the active power P, voltage stability is related to the reactive power Q. Okay, that means if there are like a reactive power shortage or excess, 
there will be voltage, voltage stability problem or reactive power mismatches, okay? And for active power mismatches, you will see the angle stability problem or frequency stability problem. But uh, what uh, we, yeah, the, and also the fixed speed, which is another problem, but then we got some, uh, we got some advantages with variable, okay, variable speed generator, we use a, a W field induction generator, okay. The past, past, so past trend was the speed of it, then we have started using variable speed wind generators, particularly, particularly W field induction generator. If you look, why do we call W field? It is, uh, yeah, so one of these will be connected with the stator and one of these the rotor. So here is a, like it's minor typos, sorry for that. So what it does, like we use, if you look, we use two back-to-back -back converters uh, here. One is rotor side converter, another one is grid side converter, okay? So we use two back-to-back -back converters, okay? So two back-to-back -back converters. <clears throat> so what we do, we can partially supply the reactive power, okay? But still there are voltage stability issues. You cannot supply the full reactive power using this converter, okay? And also, also, and as you can supply the reactive power, you can still start the generator, but uh, sometimes depending on the requirement of the system, that might not be sufficient, okay? To ensure the stability of the system. In that case, what do you need to do? You need, again, the, the fixed devices. But all these uh, squirrel case and uh, WFED induction generator, we can use for high power application. Now I'm going to show you another version, which is we call PMSG based, permanent magnet signal generator based. Okay, PMSG means permanent magnet signal generator based. As, as I told you probably earlier, it can supply both active and reactive power. But the problem is that uh, you need to have uh, like, uh, uh, this, this operates in lower capacity. You cannot operate that with higher capacity. The problem with that is uh, you need high capacity converter. Okay, that's one of the problem. So all these wind generators, particularly, still they're located far away. They are, they are mainly in offshore location. Okay, they are mainly in the offshore location. So what we do, yeah, since they are in offshore locations, so what we do, we compensate the line. We compensate the transmission line. When we compensate, that means we put a series capacitor to reduce the inductance, the inductive or reactive effect of the line. We compensate the line to improve the power transmission capability. Okay, that is what we do for the offshore. But that will introduce some new problem, which is called subsynchronous resonance (SSR). I put it in the next slide. So. What issues, like uh, here I have tried to summarize, how high power losses, because they are in offshore locations. You need spec devices, most of the cases. And uh, you will see subsynchronous resonance, okay? Because you need to compensate the line to improve the power transmission capability. So these are the major issues. So here I'm, I'm going to show you, like you can, you can overcome these issues, active and reactive power control, by controlling this inverter. So you can use a similar type of controller, like I'm going, I, I won't repeat that controller block again. You can use a similar type of controller that I showed you, like uh, I'm, I'm mostly talking from the point of uh, like uh, uh, different types of nonlinear controller. Uh, when I say RAV SMC, that means robust adaptive sliding mode controller, FBL, FBL SMC, that means uh, this is the feedback linearizing uh, sliding mode controller. So, if you look, the sliding mode controller is providing a bit of more, oh yeah, more stable responses. This is the subsynchronous resonance oscillations. So from this figure, you cannot distinguish. That's why we have the shown a zoomed window here from where you can clearly see that, like the advanced controller, what I try to convey from here is the advanced controller can solve some of these issues in the, in the grid, okay? In the grid with, with, with wind farms. Now the third key renewable energy sources is solar photovoltaic. This is the representation of a grid connected solar photovoltaic system. Here you can see that yeah, we have got DC DC converter and a DC DC and a voltage source inverter. So this is what we do. Like uh, we need to maintain a constant voltage at the input of the inverter. This is what this DC DC converter, boost converter does because the output of the PVNA is not sufficient. 
or it's not constant as well. We use a maximum power point tracking system embedded with this DCDC converter to keep a constant voltage and output of this uh, DCDC converter. And the current is the variable part, okay? The current is the variable, then we convert this, we got a DC voltage constant, DC voltage across this DC link capacitor. Then we convert it to AC voltage, okay? So this is how it works. And here is a micro grid. I show I have shown you a DC micro grid. Here I have shown a, a hybrid AC DC micro grid. And you, you will see what I try to show from here is you will see a lot of lot of converters, whether it's a DC DC in in, in DC micro grids, all DC DC, but you will see, see DC DC in DC AC and bidirectional as well. Okay, bidirectional voltage source converter. So that means all these are dominated by power electronics. When you talk about renewables, you see, when you talk about renewables, all these are dominated with power electronics converter, okay? That means power electronic converters play a key role, yeah, play a key role in, uh, in, 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 the, in, in renewable energy integration. So here I have tried introducing different uh, sources. If you look uh, here, fuel cell, basically it operates based on the hydrogen, okay? I'll show you later on. Uh, towards the end of my presentation, I'll be talking briefly about the hydrogen because that's a, there, there, there's a like a huge talk about the about hydrogen now, renewable hydrogen particularly. So here I have tried to summarize. You will see different types of control converters. Okay, this is the boost converters for PV application. This is the bulk boost for energy storage application because you need to bulk and boost the voltage depending on the requirement. And voltage source inverters for PV or window wind applications. And you will see these bidirectional for ACDC micro bidirectional converters and back to back converters for wind generators. So these are the main converters. And all these converters you will see Swiss. Okay, all these converters you will see Swisses. We can regulate the output of the converter depending on the requirement. We can regulate the output of the converter. Okay, that means we can control those uh, switches. But before I show you and talk about the control, PECI is power electronic converter interface renewable. What are the major problems? You know, the load that we have got in our places, like we have got uh, active and reactive power. Though we pay only for active power as a residential customer, but industrial customers, they power for reactive power. Let's say for motor load, they consume both active and reactive power. They operate on a certain power factor, okay? So that means the desired active and reactive power into the grid or into your load under varying load conditions is a major challenge, major problem. So if there are lack of reactive power, you'll see the voltage stability. If there are lack of active power, you'll see frequency stability problem, okay? And also appropriate switching scheme because if you switch the converters, there will be harmonic actually. Okay, there will be distortion in the voltage waveform and current waveform. So if the switching scheme is not appropriate, so what will happen? You will see distortion. Okay, you will see distortion. And also in the, in the modern power grids or renewable energy dominated grid, so you will see the generators are located close to each other. But in conventional power system, the generators are located far away from each other. So what happened when you when you particularly when you particularly couple together? Let's say some of your friends you are living uh, close, like uh, living close. Let's say I, I'll give you another example. How many of you can uh, have a strong connection with your friends from school because you are living away from them? You don't have a strong connections. Okay, but when you live close, let's say you are currently studying a uh, trip, like you have got close tie with your friends that, uh, that, that, that are close to you. The same thing happens. We, we, in system theory, like we call all systems are analogous. Okay, the same thing happens in, in, in power system. All in renewable energy dominated network, particularly in low voltage network, the generators are located close to each other. That means the interactions, the interactions among generators are more. So let's say, I, I try to show you a, a results from one of our paper. Uh, yeah, we, you, if you find there is a single PV unit, like the green line, single unit, 
you see there is no interaction at all but when you are increasing the number of pv unit you see the oscillation in real power okay in if that means you will see the frequency stability problem is still okay so we need to overcome those problems so these are the major challenges so you can design switching schemes to overcome those challenges or you can have additional additional devices for example energy storage system to tackle some of these challenges so what is the consequences the consequences is uh, yeah if that problem persists you can, you need to disconnect the renewable energy sources from grid but you cannot as per the grid code you cannot disconnect the wind farm if you suddenly disconnect the wind farm there will be blackout and south australian blackout that i was talking like the blackout in adelaide in 2016 was one of the example for 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 similar consequence so you yeah, definitely will you you will you will lose a huge amount of power and there will be huge loss of uh, uh, revenues yeah so what are the potential solution definitely you can now uh, yeah because i do work on control so i i i talk from the control point of view but uh, you can definitely put some auxiliary devices as i told uh, energy storage or flywheel uh, different storage technology you can put and uh, definitely you can yeah definitely you can uh, you can uh, tackle some of this problem but i'm talking i'm going to talk about the control point of view we can there are different types of control are model free and model based so with the with the existing uh, linear control yeah with the existing linear control the problems i highlighted in red limited operating region high harmonic stability harmonics and limited robustness against external disturbances but we can solve some of these with the uh, with the renewable so fatima i can talk till nine is that right or something sir will you repeat the question i couldn't understand i can talk till nine o'clock is that right nine or something like that nine o'clock what time do you want me to finish what time do you want me to finish nine o'clock according to our time bangladesh time oh sorry bangladesh time is five o'clock here five o'clock oh uh, Okay, sir. No problem. Okay, so yeah, I, because I might need more than ten minutes. Yeah, I prepared for fifteen minutes. So yeah, so if I consider fifteen minutes, it will be six past five. Okay, something like that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just want to confirm about the time. That okay. Sorry about that. Sorry for the interruption. But we can use some advanced control to solve many of these problems. Okay, to solve many of these problems. because uh, i've been spending over last uh, 12 years on the control working on control so we made some really good uh, contribution in terms of designing new controller so if you look i i started with feedback linearization that's why i put feedback linearization on top so it is independent of operating point but you see the red the green is the solution to some challenges okay, that i mentioned earlier the reds are still the problem so i just try to show you the evolution of the control okay in terms of solving the problem but it it, it still there are some problem like a high sensitivity to parameters output selection cannot guarantee the stability of all properties then we got sliding mode control it can partially solve some problem but cannot solve all problem except one problems it can solve all problems but uh, yeah partially solve some problems but if you look in back stepping it can solve all problems almost except the highly sensitivity to parameters high sensitivity to parameters but we can solve this sensitivity problem by adapting the parameters that is what we did actually okay that is what we did we 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 did another evolution of this okay there is the nonlinear adaptive backstepping scheme so that means using advanced control and we validated the many of this controller in our lab and uh, my phd student the reader uh, yeah they did publish uh, i did we did publish a lot of papers in that area with, with phd student as well so here is an uh, like uh, example like uh, yeah so back stepping and uh, sliding mode control nbc is the non linear back stepping esmc is basically existing sliding mode control so like uh, this is a result that i captured from one of our, our published paper from uh, uh, from on dc microgrid we try to for for in a dc in a dc microgrid we try to make a constant voltage at the at the at the at the common dc bus where all the sources are connected so 
if you look, we try to maintain 640 volt DC, okay? And we apply disturbances at uh, two second, three second, uh, 4.5, 5, 6. And then we applied at seven, eight, okay? We, we applied disturbances. So these are the transient. When we talk about uh, disturbances, basically we change the load or we change the, we, we turn off either one of the generators or we add more generators, okay? But if you look, the transients or oscillations are lower, okay? The transients or oscillation, if you look at the zoomed window, oscillations are lower with the, when we are using the backstepping controller. That means using the advanced controller, you can solve the transient issues in, 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 in modern power grid. So what are some other areas, like uh, other promising areas are electric vehicle. Yeah, though a lot of things as I said, uh, like there are millions of electric vehicles already in Bangladesh, but uh, yes, uh, so like formal passenger electric vehicle, like a uh, car and all these passenger electric vehicles, there will be more or less for you. For example, UK, they have got amended like uh, up to 2030 or 35, they are not going to have any, any like, uh, like uh, any, any fossil fuel based vehicle, they will have all electric vehicle. Different countries around the world, they come up and renewable hydrogen, Australia is leading in the space like uh, there, there are, Recently, the Australian Renewable Energy Network Agency, they funded the world largest uh, renewable hydrogen project and also local energy sharing or peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing, we call P2P -P energy sharing. That's another, another promising area. So I, I'll briefly task these areas so that you get an idea. <clears throat> so basically electric, uh, yeah, solar power electric vehicle charging station, if you consider from the, I'm talking from the renewable energy perspective because the title of this talk is renewable energy. So that, that is going to be the major, major area in the future because we are talking about fast, ultra fast, super ultra fast uh, uh, charging and also when all these heavy electric vehicle will come, they need very fast charging. Then we put huge pressure on the grid. At the same time, yeah, there is the grid to vehicle, and we are talking about vehicle to grid as well. We want to support the grid when it needs, because if you want to pump power from uh, uh, from electric vehicle to, to the grid, so that will also create some issues. So we need to tackle and we need to look into that. So renewable hydrogen. So what we are going to do, yeah, I'll, I'll spend a bit of time here. So what we are going to do, in with, with renewable hydrogen, let's say if you look, solar, wind. So currently they are directly connected with the grid through converter. So what we are going to, we have already started doing, yeah, in, in Western Australia, particularly, yeah, Western Australia is uh, part of the capital of Western Australia. In Western Australia, they have started an existing wind farm to produce hydrogen instead of generating electricity, okay? So we, we are seeing a lot of initiatives. The concept here is, Let's say you will use electricity. Yeah, you will use electricity to generate hydrogen through electrolysis, okay? If you pass electricity through water, okay, through electrolyzer, so what will happen? It will produce hydrogen and it will produce oxygen, okay? So what, after that, you will store the oxygen in a hydrogen tank, and then you will use a fuel cell to convert that back, okay, to convert that hydrogen back to the, to convert that hydrogen back to the electricity. Now the question is, so why are you going to do that? Okay, why are we going to the, do that? So the reason is like, uh, it is very complex, like hydrogen has got, very, hydrogen is the high, uh, like hydrogen has got the highest concentration. That means within a small place, you can store huge amount of energy. Currently they have estimated uh, like, uh, it, uh, yeah, we, uh, I was going to Australian National Hydrogen uh, Energy Strategy, like in a, in a place like battery, whatever the, battery, let's say battery can uh, store 10 kilowatt hour equivalent of uh, energy. So, in the same space, you can you can store three times, three to five times. They are talking, and also the lifetime will be three to five times more than the battery energy storage system. And if you do a life cycle analysis, 
you will see that hydrogen is going to be like hydrogen fuel cell or hydrogen storage is going to be more useful. And also, like hydrogen is used to produce ammonia, okay, particularly in agri agricultural land, we use a lot of ammonia, okay, as fertilizer. So, these hydrogen are currently being produced from, these hydrogens are currently being produced from uh, coal fired or steam fired, okay, by burning conventional fossil fuel. So, there is also like, yeah, there is, a, there is also a, affecting the environment. So, Instead of producing that using the coal fire generator, the future is heading to generate hydrogen from this uh, renewable. Okay, so that is that is the renewable hydrogen concept. And also local energy sharing. And uh, I'll tell you the motivation for that. It's uh, it's more or less. Yeah, let me go to the yeah. I'll talk about the motivation for in the next slide. So it is it is all about like Uber concept. Let's say if you have got a car, okay, you can drive and earn money. And uh, like uh, if you don't have a car, like you can drive someone else's car, okay. So that's the concept in energy sharing. When you have solar energy and you have got excess energy, your neighbor doesn't have energy, you can share with neighbor, but at the price are higher than the utility rate. Though it is not. It is not going to be very popular in Bangladesh because in Bangladesh they pay the the, the, the yeah like uh, they pay the feed-in tariff which you usually they use the net metering system. Okay, the concept of the net metering system is like whatever you are feeding back to the grid, you will uh, you'll get the whatever you consume. They do the algebraic sum. Okay, like they they just calculate that as as a negative load. Okay, whatever you are supplying to the grid, that consider it as a negative load. But in, uh, in developed world, let's say in Australia, like when uh, this uh, uh, when Australian government announced 20% renewal by 2020 in 2008, like they started providing subsidy, okay? Like uh, they call it premium feed-in tariff, which is 50, more than 50 cents, which is double of the utility rate. That means if you feed back to the grid, you will get 50 cents. But the utility rate, the rate for which you pay, which is around between 20 to 25 cents. That means which is double. But Australian government has recently reduced this feed-in tariff significantly. Feed-in tariff is the like uh, for, for exporting your excess energy to the grid. Okay. They reduced it significantly. So they reduced it significantly. Previously, it was uh, like uh, let's say in Victoria, it was 12 cents two years back. From this year, they started they, they started 10 cents, and from July it's going to be six cents. And apart from that, Australian Energy Market Commission, a AEMC, they are introducing new rules. They are talking about solar tax credit. That means if you export energy in future, let's say during the peak hour, that means the solar peak, you are generating more and everyone is, uh, everyone is exporting energy to the grid. So that means that will create the network congestion. Okay. So to overcome that network congestion, so what is going to do a AEMC? Like already AEM Australian energy market operator, they have already got the control in South Australia to shut down the solar if they, they want, okay? But uh, what they're going to introduce in future, they're going to introduce tax. That means if you are, if you are feeling back energy during the peak, solar peak, they're going to charge you basically. They are going to, they are going to charge you, okay? They are, they are going to charge you in future. So, so that there is solar tax. That means it, this schemes like uh, the integration that will that will like uh, that will hamper the integration of renewable energy. Okay, in the, in the grid. So, what could be the solution for that? So we can locally share the energy and we can use that. Okay, we can uh, we don't need to export it to the grid. And that is what we are trying to do here. And uh, I have got a PhD student working on this on a, on a project, and uh, she's about to finish. So we we have recently yet yeah, sorry you know, yeah, we have recently developed a smart energy hub. The concept of the smart energy hub means uh, like you have got different facilities. You will see surrounding different facilities: small industries, transport, health and education, community services, residential services, commercial services. They have got their individual. Uh, energy sources they might have 
or they might not have, they might be connected with some community based okay, energy, energy supply system. So what they can do, like we are developing an energy hub, okay, like this is the information and communication technology services that will connect information from different, different nodes in the network. And we'll be using the smart grid communication and then we'll be using the, we'll be using the uh, energy sharing and trading, okay, through this hub. So that is the concept of smart energy hub, okay. And we have also recently published uh, this work in, in a magazine, though it is not in online yet. Yeah, it is in IEEE Consumer Electronics Magazine. So this is the communication in, in the Smart Energy Hub, okay. So we try to have more reliable communication, like if one of the link pays, communication link, all these desk lines are the communication link. So you will see some, uh, you, you will see some antenna here, small antenna here and there, okay. So all the, the, they will be able to communicate with each other and you will see small EMS, they will have local energy management system and all this local energy management system will be connected with the, with the energy hub. So also we, we have introduced the data analytic framework within the smart energy hub. That means let's say from the meter, smart meter data will tell like, uh, let's say you have got a lot of different appliances in your home. What we want to do we will disaggregate your data and we'll tell you how much your refrigerator consume, how much your television consume, and we'll, we'll compare, let's say a refrigerator is supposed to consume 600 kilowatt hour energy in a year, let's say 650 kilowatt hour in average in a month. If your refrigerator is consuming, let's say 75 kilowatt hour, we will provide advice to the customer that, okay, hey, your your refrigerator is consuming more than what is supposed to consume. If it continues, let's say for the next uh, two years, three years, we will be paying this much of more electricity bill. It's good, like instead of uh, doing waiting for the period, like it's good, you, you can change and get a replacement for that, okay? So that means we will provide some advisory services to the customer. That is just one sort of example. We'll do that uh, like, uh, yeah, we, we, are, we, we, we have been doing it actually, like we, we have developed a prototype. Yeah, so, so we haven't did, we, that is still in the simulation platform, but not in the practical. Yeah, so we have been using that. We have, we have used some machine learning techniques to get the signature of all devices and then disaggregate that. So this is also the, we, the that Smart Energy Hub has got decision, decision-making framework, we have used a multi-criteria decision because there will be a lot of different parties. And all these parties, they will have a lot of different, uh, uh, different, uh, yeah, they have got different uh, like uh, preference. Let's say you want to participate for a certain period of uh, time, other participant doesn't want to participate in a day, particular day, okay? So we incorporate, we try to incorporate all the, all the decision of customers. So we have incorporated multi-criteria decision theory over there to make decision. And as I mentioned, there are interaction among different sources because they are close to each other. We have introduced a distributed control scheme within that so that the interactions can be minimized, okay? The interactions can be minimized. So, and we have got real-time bidding as well, if you look. This is the utility rate, this is the feed-in tariff rate. So what we did, like, uh, we try to make sure that the bidding will be happening within this boundary, utility rate and feed-in rate, because if it is outside the boundary, the market will not be attractive. Let's say, if you can uh, travel, like, uh, with, uh, with a rickshaw to go to Shahid Bazaar, like, uh, with, uh, with uh, 20 taka, Uber is charging 50 taka, so why should you go with Uber, okay? The same concept here. Yeah. And similarly, if you if you can go with the Uber like uh, with, with 20 or 25 taka, why should you go with rickshaw? Okay, so this is the we, we have set a boundary by considering the utility and feed in rate. So yeah, and, uh, and uh, they will be in the market, and now uh, we formulated that as a multiplayer uh, multiplayer non-cooperative game. Okay, so to get the market equilibrium. So. Yeah, that's pretty much, I have, I, I have left it open because it's uh, really open. So I, I didn't summarize so oil here. Just what I try to say, you saw probably from here, 
what do you need if you want to do really some good contribution in this area you need to do advanced you need to have advanced modeling scheme advanced control design scheme and currently we are looking alternative to data driven approach a lot of people they are talking about data okay but in power network is not yeah you you, you might not get a lot of data in power network so basically yeah so in in my research group we have been looking alternative to data driven Uh, we are almost in the mid mid way to that yeah we are all, almost in the mid way to that, that and also communication okay communication you need communication you need the concept of economics like the double option double sided auction i have shown you auction mechanism and you need the concept of optimization that means energy is not an, only an energy area it's an interdisciplinary area people from mechanical electrical computer science or be even civil engineering background they can work in this area this is a truly an interdisciplinary area so the area that you can concentrate kind of local energy market and also the hydrogen there is a, a, another area to concentrate and electric vehicles these are really really interesting areas uh, by considering the current uh, uh, current resource drive okay So that's the most uh that's the most thank you for your attention and uh, yeah i'd be happy to take take any question thank you so much sir for your valuable speech it was really amazing and it's time for question and answer session dear participants If you have any question please write it down in the chat box or unmute yourself you can also speak in bangla for your ease Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, sir. Uh, I am Umar Farooq, Triple uh, E One Five Series Red. I have a question on inverter control mainly. Uh, my question. Hello, Umar. You you are not audible. Sir, before he arrives, can you please make me host for this event for a while? Yes, I can definitely. I don't know how I become host here. Yeah. Let me go here. Omar Farooq has mentioned in the chat box to wait for a while. Within this moment, dear participants. Sorry, sir. Actually, I have internet problem. So my question is, uh, how can I um, learn about the inverter control uh, uh, and co- in mainly inverter control technique? Uh, I have I I desire to focus on this because uh, I want to work on this topic uh, for grid connected PV, PV system mainly. Uh, thank thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, the best way to start with control is uh, like uh, I always refer to the students, like uh, whoever like uh, wants to start working on control. Like I would like to refer them to go through a book uh, like uh, Power System Stability and Control. Though there is not a converter control, but uh, chapter twelve of uh, Prabha Kundra book. Okay, so that will give you the whole idea of the control particularly we said that will give you the whole idea about the control particularly i am typing it in the inbox chapter 12 power system stability and control that that is one of the thing so control you can look at that and also to start with control because uh, i i would recommend starting a uh, converter control straight away because if you don't have background on the control you will be struggling you can look at the 
another book matlab for control engineers from ogata okay yeah that there is basically the control uh, control engineering modern control engineering book by ogata okay there is a summary of uh, yeah there is a summary of his book by by putting everything in 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 that in the small book matlab by control engineers so there is one of the book like that you can go and then like you can uh, yeah you can start with pi the, the best way is to start is start with pi controller at the beginning okay there are a lot of examples in matlab nowadays there are a lot of examples in matlab you just pick one of those example and uh, and then it will help you to 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 start to start but definitely to to design advanced controller you need to have clear idea about the model because if you want to control something you need to know the details of the system you need to know the model so before you start control i would request you to look at the modeling okay and modeling is nothing it's just representation of the system so what do you want to do and based on that you need to represent the system yeah, thank you sir any other questions honorable speaker and dear participants our honorable special guest dr sinha sharma ma'am is here with us so as it is the time for the question and answer session you please write it down in the chat box and within this moment i am requesting dr sinha sharma ma'am to share a few words for this event hello everyone uh, can you hear me yes ma'am Welcome. How are you? As Assalamu alaikum, Apple Mahmud and everyone. How are you, Apple? Uh, good. Assalamu. How are you? Yes, fine. But a lot of people are dying. I was supposed to listen to your whole talk because there is a time uh, miscalculation. <laughs> so I had another meeting. I really missed your talk, but I know that it should it would have been wonderful as it always. Uh, so hope. fully the uh, uh, hopefully our uh, participants uh, got benefit a lot so i wanted to actually share my uh, screen anyway uh, i will i will be very quick uh, the you know the pace day theme clean energy revolution and apple mahmud was talking about converter control and this very important thing Uh, for our uh, energy system because control is an important uh, way uh, important mechanism uh, that uh, you really need to know and you really it would be a great asset if you can be an expert of it so regarding clean energy uh, you know very well because we are living in developing countries and you know that there are a lot of examples of clean energy starting from solar uh, starting from solar because bangladesh has done a great job in solar and also india has done a great job and we have uh, uh, and we didn't work uh, a lot to integrate this solar energy to the grid but at least isolated solar installation and those things has done a pretty good job in bangladesh and if you look at china and china has used their rivers used their rivers to install the solar panel where the waves are not so wavy or the current is not so high so this is innovative idea of using uh, the water level uh, to use uh, our solar panel installation and you know that recently wind energy has created a wonder and the korea has invested billions of dollars in the seashore and also there are a lot of in offshore but since it makes lot of noise 
Korea has used the seashore. If you just Google it, you'll find billions of dollars recently they have invested for wind energy. And uh, we are forgetting that Bangladesh has invested a lot of money for nuclear energy and uh, a nuclear power plant. So it is our time uh, to think uh, and to uh, promote our young students to re do research in those directions uh, so that we can think about not only the renewables, alternative energy sources to preserve the clean energy, we have to think about the storage of them. This is very important in individual level that how we can store those energies in important because, but since I do research in, uh, in machine learning pattern recognition, so I apply my machine learning techniques for power signals. I can tell you that I have a pretty interesting um, application of, uh, of identifying the location of power grid based on the audio signals. If your audio signal is recorded near a power means, the power mains, then uh, the signature of the uh, grid will remain within the audio signal. So you can apply uh, machine learning and pattern recognition techniques to find that from which grid uh, that the person is talking. And that is very much important for cyber security of the power grid signal. Another important thing is that we must think about application of machine learning and pattern recognition for uh, clean energy uh, related projects like, uh, like uh, you know, nowadays it is not possible uh, to maintain uh, so big solar panel miles after mile by uh, manual maintenance. So you can use the drone imaging technique to find where is the fault so that you can do it. And there are a lot of things like IoT and sensor data for those solar system management because you can use IoT or sensor data to have a smart Home, smart car parking system, smart uh, maintenance. These are the amazing application that for which you should focus on the clean energy. Okay. And also uh, important thing is that recently I have visited uh, a um, Naranganj um, dockyard because I'm involved in designing a workshop electrical machine, heavy machine workshop for, uh, for a coastal guard, Bangladesh coastal guard. And to get some idea, I had to really visit during the lockdown to Narangan's dock here to know what type of electrical equipment they are doing. You know, I have seen a lot of heavy crane uh, to to move goods and to uh, in the to bring uh, the things in the sleep way of the dock here and you never imagine and nowadays if you depend on the electricity the on grid electricity for drawing those Green, it will be very difficult to supply that demand. So for demand management nowadays, the solar-based uh, power is used to, uh, to automatically control those, uh, those big heavy uh, crane. This is a very amazing thing for me to know. And also, you know, uh, you know, there are also, it is not only the act, Activity or, or, or the control of uh, things instead of grid connection taking the clean energy. There is also machine learning and AI are nowadays used for management. That what is the performance of the building based on the sensor data? What is the user behavior of the building? And this is very important. And now coming to the infrastructure, I told you about the infrastructure that how, um, how uh, drone imaging and how machine learning are used to find the equipment fault or for uh, bringing um, uh, goods from one place to another. So 
I myself also have done in 2014 that applying machine learning for power disturbance classification. You know, there are a lot of disturbances like sag, swell, notch, interruption. You know, you can apply machine learning uh, to, uh, to automatically detect what type of disturbance is there so that utility service providers become more competitive about providing the quality power. So, you know, there are different avenues. So I, I took the opportunity to give you some light and shed some light that how you can apply machine learning pattern recognition, deep learning. Recently, just in 2021, one paper has been published in Elsevier that <coughs> review of deep learning techniques and that has been used for renewable energy. So I really request you to read those impactful journals and conference papers and so that it does not remain just as a webinar for all of us. It does not remain just as a base day for all of us. We can really, we want to really contribute in research in the area of clean energy so that we can contribute to our community because our community needs a lot of energy. We still did not achieve the electricity for all. To ensure electricity for all, we need to energize the sector of uh, clean energy, wind energy, uh, solar energy, and of course, uh, nuclear power energy. So for that case, uh, I, I have one suggestion. Since you, have, you are only student, uh, you may think that when I will pass, then I will get job in power development board or power grid company of Bangladesh then I can do something. No, you can start doing now. Find a problem in the local community and you can solve it by your knowledge using clean energy. You need a mentor. Say you can, uh, you, 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 can, you can do a small solar installation with your supervisor, with your mentor, and you can deploy it to your school in the village from where you are coming. Be or you can deploy it uh, or install it to the community clinic of your village so that a pregnant woman can have an uninterrupted power supply during the operation. Or a small fridge in that community clinic may have, make, can preserve uh, can preserve the insulation insulins because our rural electrification board are doing wonder but still it is not possible to provide um, the uh, provide the um, uninterrupted power supply all the time so as a university you a student you can talk with your supervisor your any teacher and can have some uh, uh, installation in collaboration with some industry, if you need any help with any industry, just please let me know so that I can connect you with uh, an expert from there and from where you can uh, contribute to the small solar installation <coughs> so that you can contribute it to, it to the rural school and rural community clinic. In this way, you can all contribute to the revolution of use of clean energy. So that is very important. It's not only listening to webinars, it's not only listening to the writing the journal papers. We have to contribute to the, our community because our country needs to meet 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 goals. The, if you go to the SDG 17, sustainable energy, that is related to our PACE Day theme. So please uh, think about these three points and, uh, and try to build up your knowledge what Dr. Apple Mahmoud has shared. And also, if you need any help, please reach out to me and reach out to Dr. Apple Mahmoud. He is very, very helpful. He has a lot of graduate students. If you do very well, you can 
get a PhD admission under him. I don't know whether he is capable of, he has any opportunity at this moment. But of course, if you can write to him, if he is unable to do, he will connect you with other things. This is very important. That's the purpose of webinar. We bring expert to create connectivity. It's not only a webinar. Thank you, Fatima, for inviting me. So if I, uh, I, I had a ready slide, but if I could get more time, I could share those, what I have been sharing over the world uh, about this uh, PES Day celebration. Thank you once again, but I really request you don't hesitate. If you need any help, just reach out to me. Fatima will be there. Fatima will be connecting with me. And most important, we need more women in the power and energy, not just as a quota, just but your merit. It's important because right now I work with World Bank as a, in a project called, called We Power. We Power works in four pillars. Let's stem education in the school and college regarding power and energy, professional development by workshop, and then recruitment, connecting our women to the power grid company, to the DPDC, to the energy pack, to the REB, where they can have their recruitment. And important thing where with whom I'm working is the retention, bringing the role models from the industry who are women. They are sharing their best practices of the company that why they are still retaining in that industry. That means for more women to come to power and energy industry, they can go to the field job. It is possible. And um, so these, uh, these four pillars I'm working on. So this is very important for us uh, to bring, to encourage more women to the power and energy sector. I am telling it in the capacity of uh, ITPS women in power regent and representative. I'm serving in that capacity. Hopefully I can also help our women who are interested in power and energy like Fatima in that domain also. So thank you and I wish all the best. Hope you all have a wonderful undergraduate completion wonderful and uh, outstanding brighter master study along with a PhD and if possible come back to our country even if don't come back please contribute to our country the way Apple is doing thank you very much thank you Ruet student branch for organizing this webinar take care stay safe thank you so so much ma'am for your valuable words and for making time for us Dear participants, 